What's going on out here? Hey there. Am I maintenance? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say it because I can't have my buddy Craig get trashed on YouTube. What do you want to say? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. But this is a clue. Hmm. So the way this works is when both valves are closed and the engine is on the compression stroke, which means the piston is coming up, when the piston gets to the top of the bore, which is called top dead center, and both valves are closed, that's when the spark plug fires, okay, and pushes the piston back down, okay. So that's what we're timing. We're timing when the spark goes through the wire to the plug and you're timing the, the, the where the where the word time comes in is you're timing the relationship between top dead center the which is the top the highest travel of the piston and when the plug fires that's what we're timing because it doesn't happen at the same time so if you fired the plug when the piston actually got at the top the car would be lazy, it would be slow, it, it wouldn't run. You, because, you gotta, you gotta understand how fast the piston is moving up and down. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking thousands of times per second, okay? If, if you fired the plug when the piston, if you waited until when the piston got to the top, it's way too late, way too late. So, have you ever heard the term advance? Timing advance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The advance is how many degrees before top dead center you fire the plug. So think about it this way. When, when you walk up to a door handle, do you wait till you get to the handle, stop, reach your arm out, and grab the handle? No, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, you, as you approach the door, what do you do? Stick your arm out. Stick your arm out. Yeah. That's the same thing. So the event is, in that case, the event is twisting the handle, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that, if you relate that to this, the event is firing the spark plug. Well, again, if I wait, if I wait till I get to the door and stop and then put my arm out and do this, I've I, I wasted time, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing here. We're timing the, the action, okay? How far ahead? So, for example, when you walk up to that door handle, you wouldn't put your arm out, what? You wouldn't do that 50 feet from the door, would you? No. No, there's a, there's a comfort, right? There's a certain amount of time that you go like this, you extend your arm to the to the door handle. Well, timing an engine is the same way. There's a certain amount of advance, or you can retard timing as well. Usually, you retard timing usually down track, but. So the advance is how many degrees, so the damper is degree, so every one of these is one degree, every one of these marks, okay? What we're timing is how many of these degrees are we gonna fire the plug before the piston gets to the top of its travel, okay? That's what we're timing. When you talk about timing an engine, that is what, that's what it means, okay? In, in my case, this is what I run. I run that many degrees, okay? That's my advance, okay? This is why I have it marked, okay? It's all over the place. Small blocks like 30 something degrees, 32, 34, starting to get aggressive. The, the, there's a lot of factors there. Compression comes into play, the type of cylinder head it is, the shape of the of the combustion chamber has a lot to do with it. Hemis are way different than everything, any wedge engine. So the amount of spark advance is, is not universal from engine type to engine type, okay? And then you get into, you know, nitrous and forced injection and things like that. It, every engine's got a different, a different uh, amount of advance it likes. Okay. So now, obviously, if it's too, if it if it sparks too early and the piston's on the way up, it's like hitting the piston on the head with a hammer. That is correct. That is correct. So even, so you're 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 advancing the timing 
so that it will be on time like so it's flawless so yeah so that so it's so the engine is smooth mm -hmm. otherwise it'd be bucking it would right. be whether you feel it or not you'd be bucking it and you can feel it i mean if you go way overboard you can and, and that's called detonation so when you pre-ignite that's that's what detonation is that's when, when you fire the plug too soon and there's and it's it's the wrong relationship between firing the plug which is obviously igniting the fuel and the relation of the the position of the piston so that's pre-ignition is what detonation is so you can create that yourself if you have too much advance in an engine so and they're all different that's that's what a dyno is for it's what a time slips for you'll, you'll find that sweet spot and that's it so these like a lot of advance way more than most engines it is what it is that's where they run the best um there's a lot of factors there so so anyway what we're going to do is so because i have to pull the distributor out to t to prime the engine that means it has to be retimed again so it's very important that i put things in a certain position before i pull this out because once this is out i've lost my relationship of what it was i can't i can only put it back in the way it was if i know where it was you see what i mean Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I have to put that. This mark means that's top dead center. That you okay. see that little pointer right there? There's a tiny little pointer in the middle. Yeah, I see it. So that's zero. So, and I don't, I don't time this engine the way most people do. I, and it's, I won't go into why. I'll explain that later. But um, there's there's some tricks to to doing this. So, okay, so that's on zero, and the, let's just say everything is zero. Okay. For me to get to like, let's say 32 degrees, I have to rotate this, okay, that amount. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is, there's a, there's a couple things that happen. You physically run out enough, you physically run out of room to rotate the distributor on these before I get to where I wanna go. What you're doing when you, when you rotate a distributor, okay, when you change its advance or retard based on top dead center, okay, everything's based on zero, right? So what I'm doing is I'm altering, I gotta get this cap off and it'll make more sense. So this is number one. Okay, so obviously it's a, it's a V8. So there's eight, eight of everything, right? So these are oriented. So that's the odd side of the engine. This is the even side of the engine. So it's one, three, five, seven over there. And the evens are very two, four, six, eight over here. So here's number one. So. When I pull this cap off, the rotor should be pointed right here at number one, okay? Because when that is top dead center. at top dead center, which I know it's, don't, don't, don't get, let's just say that's top dead center. <laughs> this rotor should be pointed at down here at like five o'clock, okay? <clears throat> and if it's not, let's say it's pointed here, that means I have the engine 180 degrees out, okay? And which it just means I have to make, I have to turn it around one more time. And that's the reason I have to take this cap off. Otherwise, I wouldn't have to take this cap off at all. But I have to know where the rotor is pointed. Because it's very simple to put an engine together and be 180 degrees out. Because on a four-stroke engine, the engine has to make four rotations per one stroke of power, which is why it's called a four-stroke. Which means that twice during the engine's rotation, it sees every position of the engine, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, even, I can have that there, but th this might be pointing here because it's not on the power stroke, it's on the, let's see. So it is, so it's right. So right now it's correct. So we know we're on number one right now. Okay, so we're pointing at five o'clock. So that's good. So what I've done just for today is, so what? It, so the way you change timing is you just rotate the body of the distributor because what you're doing, if you if you look, this this can't move. This is locked to the camshaft, okay? So the difference between a race car and a street car is on a street car, this would have like a springy motion to it it would have advance or retard built into it. Well, this one's locked. 
And the only movement you see there is just because of the two gears meshing together. So watch, so if I wanna change timing, when I rotate the body of the distributor, what I'm doing is I'm rotating where those are, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what that means, so this can't change. This is gonna be here no matter what. Number one is number one. That's a mechanical connection. But when I advance, so think about this. So if when number one fires, which is right here, think about it. I am actually firing the plug like back here. So as the rotor spins around, here comes the here comes the energy from the coil right here. It's actually going this way, okay? But the advance or retard is the relationship between the rotor and this right here, okay, and that terminal. Okay, so the further away, when you fire the plug, the further away it is from this, okay, that is what's called advance or retard, okay? So that's the relationship you're changing. Okay. So, so when I rotate this, I'm not rotating, all I'm doing is rotating these terminals in here. I am changing the relationship of these to this, to this rotor, okay? Okay. So, if you watch, so when I do this, when I do this, see, it, it rotates independently. I mean, just, you gotta ignore that a little bit. But, think about it. When this is moving, I'm, I'm moving this. I'm not moving this. <coughs> this is absolutely locked to the engine. It cannot, that can't change. If it changes, you've screwed something up. So, so this would be advancing. So, the, the more I rotate the distributor, okay, the further away, the further away that's getting from that terminal, okay? So if I wanted, if I ran the engine dead zero, which no one would do, obviously it would fire as soon as it got there at that point, but it's too late at that point, so. Anyway, that's what timing is. That, that's what timing is. So what I've done, just, just to cheat, so I've put a mark, if you can see, there should be two marks, uh, is that where you rotated? See the two marks I've got? Come back around. Oh, yeah, I see. There's a mark on the distributor and there's a mark on the block. That's just for me to eyeball it. I'm going to time it with a timing light. But for us to get the car running today, all I got to do is put it in and, and line it up close. I could be a degree or two off. No big deal. It'll run. But if I don't take the cap off, see, I, I can actually put this in 180, 180 degrees out. It'd be trying to fire the opposite cylinder, which is a disaster. Remember when I tried to fire it the first time I had two plug wires off? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's bad. So, so this will just pull out. So on a big block, right, sir. Like most cars, I mean, most, most cars are this way. Oh. Most engines, I should say. So, if you look down in here, so that's our intermediate gear down in there. So that is timed to the camshaft. Okay, so the camshaft spins that. And, that, and then this is spun by that intermediate shaft. So that's, you're timed off your camshaft. That's, that's how the distributor spins on almost every engine. Some engines don't have them. But. Now, on a big block Chrysler, the oil pump is actually hanging outside the engine, which is a, so this is the oil pump right here. It's actually clear out, it's not in the oil pan, it's actually outside. So I have to spin that to prime the engine. The only way to do that is to go through here because on a big block Chrysler, that intermediate shaft, which is driven off the camshaft, it drives the distributor and the oil pump at the same time, which again is very common. But anyway, long story short, that shaft has to come out. So we gotta pull that out. And this is pretty much how you prime any engine. I mean, very few or any different, but there are some. So if you look all the way down in there, if you look clear down through that, so that gold, you see that? You're seeing clear the oil pump. Yeah. So what we have to do, this is how we drive the oil pump. 
So this dude, sorry, sorry about blinding you. So on a Chrysler, the oil pump spins counterclockwise. So you gotta make sure that the drill is turning counterclockwise. So this has to go all the way down. There we go. Now I'm, I'm into the oil pump now. So I'm gonna start spinning the oil pump. And believe me, when it grabs, you know it. <laughs> remember, uh, remember that feeling when you were notching pipe? Yeah, It's yeah. the same because you, have, you don't realize how much power it takes to drive an oil pump. Now I use lightweight oil, it does, it's, it's not too bad, but, but you'll hear it. There it goes, there it goes. <laughs> so now I'm actually, so if, if you look at the oil paint, look at the oil gauge in the car. Oh, this one's electric. Oh no, it's not, no it's not. So look at the oil. Tell me how much oil pressure I got. Probably 20, 30 pounds, maybe 40. About 50. How many? 50. Oh, wow. OK. About a minute. And I'll tell you how I know I'm oiled, because I now see oil up in here in the top of the engine. So I know that oil has made it through the entire engine at this point. We have to do this every time you, you don't let a car sit this long and then just start it. All right, we would destroy the bearings in the car. No, no, the frame, no, no, no. I want to leave it off so it'll bleed the air out. Hit it again. <clears throat> Seven. Well, yeah. <clears throat> great for noise. center carb always dribble a bit out of the booster? No. It was a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if it... The, the back and front were fine. Okay. Oh, uh, trans fluid? Yep. Grab that thing off the floor. Fender cover. Fender cover. You need to make these at Jigs. My, they're in my trailer. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Thank you guys with your matching hats. Do we? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. That's embarrassing. 
was going to say that earlier. That rag. Guys look like a top fuel team. Uh huh. <laughs> Bottom fuel. Bottom fuel. <laughs> it's off. Yeah, one's off. So, funny story. Many, many, many moons ago when I raced my duster. Oh, I remember that. It sat all winter in my mom's garage. No, it happened to. Oh, was it in Columbus? Yeah. When I was there. Oh, yeah, you're right. Both of them were out. Right. Sat in the garage all winter. It is Ohio. We go to fire the car up. <laughs> we go to fire the car up. And it makes this really weird sound when it fired up. I don't like, mm, whatever. I get out of the car and it runs fine. I get out of the car and I look behind the car and the whole garage was covered in dog food. So over the winter, these mice had packed my headers. Every single tube was packed full of dog food <laughs> and they were using it as a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> so I fired the car up and it blew all of it out. I mean, it was everywhere. It was, oh, what a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so ever since then, I put caps on headers. I only saw one of them under there. Well, I'm sure the other one's in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> uh oh. I don't know where the other one went. Oh boy, the boss is here. Uh, shop supervisor to you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> shop supervisor. Oh, so is. we got one Hemi run running. This well, is not a Hemi. Well, I know it's I'm not a Hemi, but a you know it's a. We got one more to go. <laughs> it's, it's a Mopar. This one Mopar running. What about the other Mopar? Uh, not ready. My drill's right there with the, uh, and I got. Here. They're off schedule. I know. Dang. I blew it. I said Hemi. Yeah, yeah, okay, here we go. Craig's a little defensive. Yeah, He's Craig had to make sure that we know that his is a Hemi and not this one. <laughs> uh, I, I suppose bromance he's been getting yelled at. Not really. Look at them in their matching hats. We, I said I, I know, hats. that's what I said, matching hats. Look at that. How sweet. What's he doing? Yeah, here we go. Whoa, oh. God. That car I'm allowed. <laughs> no, it's distilled water. Yeah, but this is what I use for my coffee pot. It, it's, <laughs> it's in trouble. <laughs> okay. We got one more to do. Yep. Yay. Oh, it's really cold and dark. Yeah, we gotta get a lot of fuel in yours to start it. We need a. Uh, I got it. I got it. Needle newspaper. I got it. So you're gonna start Craig's tonight? Yeah, right, right now. now. Huh? Oh, all right. So, <coughs> so we we just did a 440. Now we're doing a Hemi. The architecture of both engines is very very similar. So everything you've seen a few minutes ago is really gonna be duplicated right here. There's very little differences as far as priming the two different engines, so. All right, you ready? That's what I'm about to check. Oh, you got it now. It won't feel like it. Nope. I think now. You want in? No, no, no. That's a new one. Mm, I've struggled before through some really? lines. So it's in for sure, right? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Well, turn it slowly as you turn the, pull the trigger as you're 
talking. I don't think, I don't think it's in. It ain't in, dude. Yeah, it's in. No, yeah. it's in. It looks like it's in. Can I take this off? <sighs> Here, man. It's in. Let's see where it's in. Now it's in. Get in there. How much I got? I think I just I primed it for you to prime it. He didn't have it in. <laughs> 60. 60? Yeah. 70. Okay. I don't like the hexagon. Oh, well, whatever. It's the same prime tool we've used for the last 20 years. <laughs> you know, Halloween, I don't think. Anyway, amateur. Well, which one? Okay. Where's the shaft at? Uh, what do you want? Shaft. <laughs> Ain't these great working conditions? Grab me awesome. intermediate shaft. <laughs> it's like we love each other. <laughs> okay, it's clean relatively. I need a big long screwdriver. Big long screwdriver on my toolbox. I just use that. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna have to turn it to get it in. I know. I'm good at it though. <laughs> yeah, just like you. No, I, I, I just drop it in. You're good at it, just like you are priming it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, well. just let it drop. Turns <laughs> <laughs> out was slightly up. Mm -hmm. it wasn't there. You are. Very good. There you go. That's it. That's it, I think. Yep. That's how it was, yep. isn't it? That's it. Alright. Hey, okay. distributor. That's distributor. Yours. Jeff just wasn't worthy enough. That's why it wasn't working. Craig's the only one worthy. I'm more of a wedge guy. Everyone's in his way. Jeff's never in my way. Got five people There's five here people in a 24 foot trailer. Oh, in the front end. Uh, heavy here. and a mini bike. Here. Well, open the back door. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't do that? Shut up. Yes. Open the back door. <laughs> what are you going to do? Open the back door? That's bad. Now it's going to really be cold. So, same deal here on the Hemi. Number one is in the same spot. So, it should drop in. That's not number one. I don't need to put my cap on, but number one's over here somewhere. It is? Well, let's get the cap and make sure. What? Same spot as a wedge. Well, those things are pretty clock. good. Maybe you're right. Well, it can't be up here. No, let's leave it. Let's get my cap so I know where I'm, what we're looking at. Don't get it clear out of whack. Well, I had it right, and then there. There. As long as that's at number one on the cap, then you got it. Okay. Yep. It be twinning. Twinning is winning. I got it so you can still turn it if you have to. Okay. You want Bump. me to hit the fuel pump? Yeah, go ahead. Bump it. I got to get in there. Oh, there you go. You turn ignition on? Yeah. How much pressure you got? Six here to one on the back of it. Okay. Okay. No leaks. Yep. Did we tighten all the? You tighten your carb studs down. Yep. Well, you check. You check these. I never touched these. I did the back one. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. I'm going to put a lot of gas in it. I already did. No, nah, that's nothing. Jeff. I don't want to backfire with that silicone. Jeff Jones, amounts of gas. I know how to do it. Yep. 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 Yeah? Are uh, you in neutral? Yeah. 
Watch for fire. There it is. Time is way off. Sounds retarded. I'll keep my car. a lot. Huh? Don't have to move it much. Hang on. Okay. As soon as you give it gas. You think it's way retarded? It sounds like it. Okay. Well, it's because as soon as you give it gas, it wants to die. It wants to die. Okay. Time is for sure, but oh, I know. It's close. <laughs> that's, that's both cars. That's 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 that both cars. Did I have 88 pounds of pressure cold? Yeah. Doctor. And they're both running. I'm kind of amazed. <laughs> what? <laughs> that thing is that a mean thing to say. <laughs> what do you mean? You're kind of amazed. Kind of amazed. Oh, amazed after yesterday's. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video we did. Uh, Jeff and Craig are getting excited. They finally got their car started up for the season. We can't be in the wrap-up? Well, yeah, I was just waiting for you guys. I was, gonna, I was making my, I was making my way over. solo? He's going on a solo career. I guess. I was making my way over. It's hurtful. Hello. I'm not kidding, you're I was seriously, I was making my way over. Right, right, right. He's too good for us now. Oh, you know what? You know what was Bain off? Your advance. Bruisers. Your advance was way off. You started <laughs> way too soon. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, take it from the top. We hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. Um, Jeff and Craig finally got their car started for the first time. And where are you racing? Where, where's the first race? Uh, Kill Care, Xenia, Ohio, uh, next Saturday, uh, what, August or April 9th? Yes. April 9th. Sounds stock super stock race. About right. Be there. Or be square. I don't know if we'll be there, but hopefully we can be. Yeah. Prob I, don't I would love to go and watch their first race, but I never, are we, our schedule is so random and Belly never tells me anything. So um, I want to thank everybody for all the super nice comments on our last video. Everybody's been super nice and uh, has, you know, a lot of congratulations and stuff. Um, we're all really happy about that. So. Yes, and then we had a bunch of people order shirts, so thank you guys for that. Thank you. I'm that helps in a... us. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, okay. Always talking over me. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're trying to do better. <laughs> uh, I'm putting in another big merch order uh, tonight, too. So. so I'll have more shirts soon. Um, I'm going to ship out as many as I can with what I had over le or last order and probably email the rest of the people. So thank you guys for watching. We're going to find a converter here real soon, and that's our next step. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.